Hey, welcome back to our channel, Eye to Eye, Disney Through Our Eyes. I'm Jessica. And I'm Kyle. And tonight we're going to be discussing the new Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. We're going to be talking about our thoughts and impressions on the film, how it compares to the previous one, and whether we like it on a scale of one to five groups, baby groups, maybe? Baby groups. Baby groups. So our thoughts are going to be uh, just ahead, but also if you have not seen the film, there are going to be spoilers after the jump, so please make sure that if you have not seen the film, do not watch this video. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is the sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy, which came out a few years back, and honestly, I had no clue who the Guardians of the Galaxy were in the very beginning. My love for them is starting to grow a little bit more with each sequel that comes out, so by the time Volume 3 comes out, I'm probably going to be a super fan of Guardians of the Galaxy at this point. And Jessica, you're slowly growing in your Marvel fandom. But also, I think he, the Guardians of the Galaxy have starting to win a place in your heart. Well, since I've watched both movies in two days, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have a choice but to like it. Well, I made her watch the first one again, even though she's seen it before, just to familiarize herself with it. Didn't help at all. Shh. <laughs> How I long know. did it take us to go through the plot when we were just talking about it after the movie? Well, I mean, that's not the point. <laughs> the point is that I know who Peter Quill is. And what's his other name? Star Lord. Who are the other five main, four main members of the um, Guardians of the Galaxy? Rocket, Groot or Baby Groot, mm -hmm. Gamora. Uh huh. Wait. Dude, math is hard, isn't it? <laughs> That's it, right? No. Oh, Dra Drax. Drax. Dra Drax. Okay. So his full name is Drax the Destroyer. So you can. Oh, I thought it was gonna be short for Draxula. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was pretty good, right? That was really good. <laughs> no, he's not a vampire. This is not... But he's got he... those red things on him. Yeah, but this is not... What do you call it? With Robert oh, Pattinson. Oh, I remembered another funny thing that happened in the movie. <laughs> okay, well, we can talk about it in a minute unless you want to talk about it right now. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So we're going to talk about really quick is just the basic plot of this. We're not going to get into a ton of detail when talking about the plot because we've just got other topics we want to talk about. And the plot's so good, you need to see it in real yeah, life. Yeah, it really is. And I, we're not going to do it justice talking no. about it. Um, but Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 picks up pretty much right where we left off at the end of the original Guardians of the Galaxy, where they have formed their team, right. and now they're working as mercenaries, technically is what you would call them, uh, working for hire, doing jobs for people, whether that be capturing somebody, which is what they're doing when we find them, they're trying to catch Nebula, right? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Are you sure about that? No, because I thought they were first... Um, fighting that worm thing. Well, they were fighting the worm thing, but why were they fighting the worm thing? Well, this would go back to Jessica not understanding the plot. <laughs> this um, is what I have to deal with. <laughs> they were fighting the worm to... Appease? The, yeah, the gold people. The, gold the sovereign. People. The sovereign, yes. yes. That's what they were called. The sovereign led by Aisha, which I thought was a very common name for an alien race here on Earth. That's a very common name, Aisha. Yeah. Uh, so I was really interested. That's what they chose to go with for the leader of that. But yeah, so they are trying to defeat this giant worm monster looking thing for them. And in exchange, they are getting Nebula back after she escaped oh. so they can turn her back into um, the Nova Corps. Oh, for a bounty. I didn't know that's why they got her back. Yeah, that's why. They, why would you want to go after that girl after she tried to kill them last time? Other than to, you know, get revenge and give her back to the police. I don't really know. <laughs> As usual. I just thought it was like sisterly bond. Like Gamora wanted her sister Nebula back. So it was going to be Not like, so much. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I really didn't know. I watched the movies for the music. So. Well, anyway. And the music was very good in this movie. Again, Not as good as the first one. The, I, I have to agree. Yeah. that's It was definitely a little bit better than the first one. But so they get um, Nebula back. But they end up making some enemies in the Sovereign by yeah. insulting them. They're kind of snobbish, wouldn't you think? Which, the, the Guardians which, or the, the Sovereign? The Sovereign people. Oh, man, they're super snobby. It was like you even saw them like roll out the red carpet for her, or blue carpet, or whatever it was at one point for her. And, yeah, it was blue. And it was at one point, it was really funny because they couldn't roll it, and yep. you could just see like the pretentiousness coming out in the Queen and the rest of the people. It's like, oh, how dare she not be able to roll out the carpet for me? Yes. 
Uh, so that was yeah, and they called Rocket. What they call him? A chipmunk? Chipmunk. Or... Well, he had several names for yeah, Rocket throughout it was best. this. Like monkey at one point, triangle nose monkey or something like that. Trash Panda was my favorite. Trash. <laughs> Poor Rocket got abused throughout <laughs> this movie. I'm gonna start using that, Kyle. You're such a trash panda. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, that just is mean. That's awesome. Uh, so yes. anyway, okay, all right. Back to a little bit of the plot. Uh, so they made them mad because Rocket has stole some batteries from them, which is something... Some that, important batteries. Some important batteries. And uh, also insulted them. So they have come after them, and they're chasing them through space. They're trying to get... Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are trying to get away. And then all of a sudden, as they're about to get shot down by the Sovereign, what happens? Don't do this to me, <laughs> you man! You want me to give you a hint? Yes. Somebody saves them. The blue guy. Yonder? Yonder? <laughs> Did you just say Yonder? I thought that was his name. Oh, I know we're from Alabama, but Yonder was not Yondu. Yondu. Yondu did not save them. Oh, okay. Um, let me think again. We oh, the the Revengers. <laughs> no! Stop did laughing just, at me! Did you just say the Revengers? You just combined Ravagers and Avengers into one thing. Don't laugh at me. Okay. The, the people with taser face. <sighs> no. Oh. <laughs> so they are saved by someone in a white, really smooth-looking ship. Ego! Ego. So we don't find out it's Ego for a few minutes later, but they are saved by Ego. They crash land on another planet if they make a jump through hyperspace. Ooh, fun fact, Ego is Peter's dad. Yeah, I was getting there. Shh, I knew something. <laughs> she was like, I wanted to say something that I knew. So, yeah, we meet uh, Ego. He, We find out he is Peter's father, and um, he's trying to convince Peter to come back with him to learn a little bit about his heritage. Yeah. And uh, this is kind of where we take a little bit of a turn in this movie, where we split our characters up. And we have two different storylines going mm -hmm. on. That was so freaking confusing. <laughs> I know. This is where it really got hard for her to follow what was going on in the movie. She's like, wait a minute. Why aren't they together? And why are they fighting Shh. these ones? <laughs> Basically, Drax, Gamora, and Peter go with Ego and Mantis, who we meet, which is a new character. Well, she's in the comic books. And she's got the powers of like. Oh, yeah. I knew that. She's an empath. She can feel people's feelings and apparently put Ego to sleep. Um, she has like praying mantis things. Antenna. Yes. Is that what they look like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And they have like the lights. Red, little lights on them too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're making fun of me. I am, but you're so adorable. Oh. It's not even funny. Um, but yeah, so they go off with Ego to his planet, and it's just called Ego's planet. He doesn't have a name. Yeah. And then we have Rocket Groot. Baby Groot. Baby Groot. Excuse me. I gotta say, Baby Groot. Um, stay back and try to fix their shit. And Nebula. And ne well, Nebula, because she's captured by them, right. and but so she's still back there. She's still back there, and so who comes to try to capture the Guardians I of the don't Galaxy? Know why you keep asking me? Questions. You said them earlier, but you combined it with the Avengers. There's sirens going on outside. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> like squirrel. <laughs> so Ravagers, the Ravagers, Ra yeah, and Yondu's team. Not people. Yonder, Yondu. Yondu, you I tried to say it deliberately. So a little bit of strife is happening amongst the Ravagers because they're losing faith in Yondu and kind of when they go to capture the Guardians of the Galaxy, it's only Groot and uh, Rocket and Nebula, they kind of break apart and they end up doing a mutiny on Yondu and putting him in jail or their, I guess, brig or whatever you call yeah. it um, so that he, they can, you know, get a bounty for them, I guess. Yep. And um, we see eventually they, uh, that being Yondu, Baby Groot, and Rocket breaking a, w a free and end up killing all of the ravagers mm -hmm. with uh, the little whistle spear thing yeah which is a really interesting weapon i thought that's the best weapon if i could have a weapon that i could just phew, phew, phew. i feel like i would already be dead though if that was the case oh <laughs> thousands of times over no i'm teasing well, i love you it should not uh bother you that i would not be able to kill you that way because i can't whistle i can't whistle on cue you know mm. okay <laughs> You just did dunk you. Well, I would need like a little like soccer whistle, like. Phew, phew, phew. 
<laughs> so it'd be real good. You know, I thought that was going to be like the dumbest like weapon ever it's that you would. Excellent. But it's awesome. It's so awesome. It's but, quiet. You don't know it's coming. And the fact that it can go and kill like a hundred people in one mm-hmm. circle. And that's one of the cooler things is where you see Oh yeah, it's cool Yondu, to kill people. No, Yondu <laughs> and Rocket and Baby Groot all walking together on that catwalk as the people are just getting Yeah, that was killed. really bizarre. And then Baby Groot kills his first person. Oh, he like runs towards him screaming at him. And then, no, remember he... He knocks them oh, down yeah, right, and then yeah. throws them off the wall, which was very much like Star Wars. Remember when they're on the catwalk and it's Luke and Darth Vader and mm-hmm. they're like on the catwalk and like he falls? That's what this reminded me of. Can you believe it? There's a, a common theme here. Catwalks just do not need to be anywhere our heroes. Thank you. Like, in any movies. Duh. Ever. It's kind of like horror movies when the girls go into a go dark into, room yeah. by themselves. I'm like, no. Don't get on a catwalk. Don't go You're going to die. Yeah. So... Uh, that's what's going on with them. They have escaped from the Ravagers. Nebula, at, during all this, has broken away after she helped mm-hmm. the Ravagers capture those three and is going to try to kill Nebula. So we'll cut back over to... Wait, you said Nebula has tried to get break away and kill Nebula. I'm sorry, Nebula is bro- broken away and tried to going to try to kill Gamora. There we there go. There we go. See, you're getting <laughs> me confused now. Uh, but yeah, so now we're back. Ego is telling Peter all about his lineage. We find out Ego is what's called a celestial, which is basically a god. and just A little, little g-god. Then, yeah, sure. Just a side note there, and I really appreciate that for us personally as Christians, that they did make a very good point there to say little g. And I think that was just a nice nod. You know, they yeah. don't want to alienate anybody and make sure they feel like they're only catering to Christians or non-Christians. Right. So I thought that was a nice, funny way to put that in there and say, hey, we're not saying this is God. Right, know, kind right. Of thing. So that's really cool to find out that he is a celestial. He's basically immortal. Well, so That's what he says. So we think. Yeah. And well, it's, it's what he tells us. Yeah. Is that he's immortal. So we've learned a little bit about uh, Peter and his heritage. And so now we get to see him play a little bit with the powers that he has, being half human and half celestial. Yeah. And it's kind of funny to see what they end up doing, him and his father. It was kind of weird to see Peter, like, pick up this weird blue power. Like, he just created it and then channeled it into a ball. And they're, like, throwing a football worth of energy. Well, I guess it, it's, like, energy. Yeah, didn't he, like, comment early in the movie, too? He's like, you know, I didn't get to play ball with my dad, you know, kind of thing. He did. Did you just not get that? Oh, it's yeah. all coming back. <laughs> that should have been the song that they played in that movie. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. No, it's all coming back to me now. Oh, it's a meatloaf song. Is that actually from the 80s, though? That's because It is from the 80s. Oh, it is? Okay, well. Meatloaf! I don't know. I don't oh, know music. Oh, man, not the food. She's anyway. better, she knows more music than me, <laughs> yeah. which is why she probably enjoyed the music from the other film a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, so we see that. We're kind of seeing them bond. Gamora's kind of catching on that something's not right. She yeah. knows that Mantis is hiding something. Um, and then... We finally kind of start picking up on this ourselves, and we learn that Ego is actually trying to use Peter and his ability to harness that power to help him take over, basically, the universe. Which, how funny, let's pause. Did you know that Ego was going to be Kurt Russell? I did, because I saw the trailer before. Uh, I, s- I guess I saw the trailer, too, but I didn't really pay attention. And who did you think he was at the beginning of the film? Um, What did I say? I forget who you said it was. Shoot, I can't remember, but somebody that looks like Kurt Russell. Yeah. Oh, uh, the first scene, it looked like Patrick Swayze. Oh, it did a little bit. Yeah, I could see that. Yes, yeah. it did. And it then, did. because it was just a profile, but then he turned and I was like, whoa, that's yeah. Kurt Russell. Yeah. And it, that was, I don't know, that was kind of weird because in every other Kurt Russell movie, he's this really good guy. Yeah. But now he's well, like, he was for the most part in this film. No, and- he was inherently evil. <laughs> His whole plot was evil. It was to kill people. And then... I know, but as we saw him, and you didn't pick up on it until too late. No. And I even saw... I am a very poor read of people. <laughs> so, that is not my superpower. I don't... Mine would probably be napping. But anyway, yes. I digress. Um, so, let's talk about how... So, now we're really seeing that Ego is bad. Yeah. And I guess... Do you want to talk about the creepy part? The creepy part. Which one are you returning? I feel like there are a lot of creepy Where parts. Where Gamora and Nebula see... Oh, yeah, so no, Nebula and Gamora down after, well, I guess I should say they end up meeting on the planet. Uh, Nebula's trying to kill Gamora. They have a reckoning, and then they kind of make up and realize that they actually do kind of care for each other. Yeah. They're walking down below the surface of the planet, and they find all these bodies. And that's where the plot kind of Not thickens. just bodies. Skeleton heads. Yeah. Not, not their arms, really. It's like heads. Heads. Just heads everywhere. Creepy as all get out. <laughs> it's like the mummy. So we find out that 
Ego has been having children with tons of different species across the galaxy, trying to find someone who can recreate his celestial genetics. And Peter is the only one that has successfully had it passed on to him, what, thus why he wants Peter to come back to him. He can help him control the power and to take over the rest of the universe, essentially, because he's planted something like a seed or something. Yeah, all remember he planted four seeds, yeah, he said. Not four, like many seeds all around the, like, like the globe. We saw only oh. four. Well, but... something happens with four. <laughs> but anywho, the dead bodies are all his children that he killed yeah. because they weren't celestial beings. Yeah, and so that's where we kind of see the evil come out in Ego. Kind of. Kind of. You kill millions of children after you've had relations with all of these women. Relations. That's such a nice way of saying it. Well, this is a family show. <laughs> And we won't get into the fact that he wasn't married to all these women. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and there it is. Uh, but yeah, so he's he's trying to convince Peter to help him. He doesn't want to, so he kind of forces Peter to, to use his power. And we see, like, on Earth, the seed blossoms and becomes this blob of energy and is about to, to overtake the planet. Took over Dairy Queen. Took over Dairy Queen. Sad day there, even yeah. though I don't really feel like Dairy Queen. I know. Um, but yeah, and so things are just kind of falling apart, but then the Guardians of the Galaxy come together, and they start, Ta -ta they start, and they even have that Avengers moment where they circle up, and you even saw me, like, I started, like, tapping, you was like, there it is, there it is, there it is, and then the best moment, something comes and hits, uh, Mantis, and you, you see Drex, oh, watch out! <laughs> <laughs> so what hit her was the, um, Sovereign people have found them, this is kind of escalates the drama in it while they're fighting, um, Ego. And they've also come back to try to take over, not to take on the Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's what ends up hitting Mantis. And so and at this point, when they're fighting Ego, now you said all the Guardians are back together. Yeah. This is when they're in Ego's brain, right? Well, like, they're inside the, the planet. The brain they're of the trying, planet. Yeah, they're basically trying to work to his actual brain. So when they, so when they drill down into the core of the planet, the core of the planet houses Ego's real yes. life brain. Yes, because remember that's what he said when he was. He realized he was in existence. This is why I don't do fantasy, sci-fi, all this stuff. Because every movie is different. And if I go onto a different planet on Tatooine or... That would be Star I don't Wars. know. That's what I'm saying. Like, if I go onto a different planet in a different world, I'm not going to find brains in the center of the Earth. So... How do you know? We just haven't gone down the center of Tatooine. Oh, gosh. It is a very confusing... When we got into the cosmic realm of the Marvel Universe, it is so it's very confusing for me. Anyway, long story short... They, they fight. Who? They fight. They fight. They end up defeating Ego. And very sad moment in the case of Yondu, who has basically raised Peter. Um, he never... He, but not well. Not well. Let's he be admits real. that. We didn't like Yondu till the end of this movie. Well, I kind of liked him because he was funny. Oh, I hated him in the last movie. He well, was so hateful. And you're not supposed to really like him, but then you understand when he... We thought he abducted Peter. Right. Right. But he was actually coming to deliver him to his father, but when he realized what was happening to all the children, he was delivering to Ego. Which he we, saved him. He saved him, and in essence, became that father figure. Not really a good one, and he admits that. And what ends up happening is just Peter and Yondu left on the planet. There's one rocket pack to get off the planet and one spacesuit so that someone can breathe. And Michael Rooker, the character who's playing, is the actor who's playing Yondu, they shoot up into space with the rocket pack, and then he puts it on Peter and says ego or says ego may have been your father but he wasn't your daddy and it was i looked over her i was expecting the tear to roll down she held it together i did you believe did. it or not very it was a very touching moment honestly and and then he dies and then he dies and so they give him a funeral by incinerating his body and they guess they let the ashes go into space in a really cool moment the ravagers all return from across the galaxy to give him a ravager funeral with fireworks it was a it's not the way I thought they were going to end on it. It was kind of a, a very... It was somber. Very, it was somber, but it was a happy somber. Because it was a, a good end to someone's story who did not have a good life. Well, and Gamora... Is that the green girl? She's Gamora? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, like, comes over and hugs... Well, there's two green girls now. Mantis is green as well. No, she's not. She's, she's like, pale. She has green stripes in her hair. Yes. She wears a green suit. She's basically green. Anyway, Gamora. White and green are different colors, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so Gamora like comes over and hugs Peter and says, um, "Shoot, something about it's the un the unspoken the unspoken because they had talked about Peter had mentioned that you know we can't talk about the unspoken because in TV shows the unspoken if you talk about it talking about the relation 
because she yeah. the relationship. Then it doesn't happen. She was like, there is no unspoken. I, I don't care about you like that. And then she says, uh, "Ask." he looks at her and asks, um, what do you think? He said, it's something unspoken. So yeah. it's kind of, it was a nice way to bring that love story in there. they never kissed. But it makes you that want That would have it. been the one thing that would have redeemed it for me. They, like. I think they did a good job there of saving it for the third one, probably. Don't you think? I reckon. Yeah. I mean... There's another kind of a love triangle there. Not triangle, but love relationship between Drax and Mantis. Yes. With basically them insulting each other. That well, really, Drax the best. Oh, my gosh. You are ugly. Yes. <laughs> but it must mean that they, someone really loves you if you're ugly. <laughs> if, they they can, <laughs> if they can stand your disgusting face. But it, you kind of saw a little hint there that they might be a little romantic attraction there but they never really got into anything besides just that little cat talk funny. and stuff like that and of course mantis is kind of like a com- blank canvas she'll accept anything that anybody says when he says that you're beautiful because you're disgusting so i really love that relationship another really cool story was and it, i think they didn't do as good of a job i felt like with this one with rocket and him kind of having to deal with being that character that no one really wants to be around because all he yeah. does is complain but at the end he kind of takes a lesson from Yondu and learns that even a character like Yondu can have a redemptive story. Mm-hmm. So can he. They didn't. You're right. Because here in this movie, we see everybody's kind of picking on him. Mm-hmm. Calling him Trash Panda and Chipmunk and whatever else. <laughs> trash Panda. That is my favorite. Hashtag for this video. Trash, trash Panda. panda. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you don't see why they're picking on him. Like, Rocket's not as angsty in this mm-hmm. one as he was in the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So that was kind of just So I'm really interested to see where they're going to go. With this next, yeah, week. I well, know. We're gonna... I didn't know where this one was going. I was confused the whole time. Just so. overhead the whole time, literally in space. Well, we know that we're going to see the Guardians of the Galaxy in Avengers three. I know you don't know that, but I know. Who that. are they? So these people are in the Avengers. They're not in the Avengers. They're not part so of. So then, that why team. would it, you say the Avengers? Because 3? the Avengers three is bringing together in an in Infinity War is bringing together a lot of uh, different characters to fight Thanos, who you know about. Okay. Yeah. So. That's kind of what's going on there. Okay. To kind of start wrapping this up here, I want to talk about some of the funnier moments that we loved from this movie. And one of those was Baby Groot. <laughs> of course. I think Baby Groot was the redeeming comic relief of this whole movie. Well, everybody had so many funny moments in this. I don't I, think there was... Honestly, I think the theater that we were in was just laughing the whole time. Well, what's it's funny great. is there was so many jokes in it that some people got some of them or some people didn't think they were funny. And then you'd hear like this random guy in the background, ha! Huh! <laughs> just laughing about the most random thing. There was even like a serious the moment. The mom over in the corner Oh, laughing. that was so funny. She was so funny, yeah. I think that's what's so much fun about going to theaters with a bigger group like that is because there's so many people who get so many different yeah, types of Yeah, you're right. Stuff. But Baby Groot, one of his funnier moments is when he's trying to help Yondu and Rocket escape from the Ravager prison and they want him to go get the fin, or mm-hmm. little shark fin thing for Yondu, which helps control his little uh, his arrow thing. thing, his little whistling arrow. And... He keeps bringing back little they, things. They're trying to describe it to him, and he brings back... What does he bring back? He brings back, like, uh, underwear. Oh, so, yeah. Someone's toe. Do you remember that? He, he's like, I don't even want to know if you guys have, like, like a, human toe. a fridge full of toes. And, he's, and he says, we don't. And so then you're like, oh, he cuts He brings, toe. like, a whole desk. Oh, my gosh. Really. Yeah. Well, here, quick shout out to Andy, who is a subscriber on our channel. He told me today about this little clip here, and he said this is, like... Per- the perfect example of what his son does when he asks him to bring something to him. So he'll just start bringing him random things, <laughs> trying to guess what it is. Perfect example. Why don't you talk about another moment that we love? My favorite movie, my favorite movie, my favorite part in the whole movie is when Yondu is coming down with his little whistling thing and he's like holding it and he goes, Get through, it, saying, get through it, get through it. He said, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> so yeah, Peter was like telling him, I was like, dude, you're just like Mary Poppins. He's like, oh, is that good? He's like, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! But he also thinks Mary Poppins is a guy. So, so it's really, really awesome there. So oh, that's God. probably the two moments where we just kept laughing the most there. Um, so to wrap up, let's give our rating on how many baby groups you would give this film. I'd give it 3.5 baby groups. 3.5 baby groups? I'm going to give it 5. I Only because I didn't understand it. So. Oh, that's, and I understand that now. So 5 baby groups for me. And that, in 3.5 of you, I think we can deal with that. It yeah. was a good movie. Do you think it was better than the last one? Yes. Except for the music, but yes. Yeah. Music was still good. Just yes. a little bit better than the first one. I think we knew more of the songs in yeah. the first one, too. 
Um, so that's going to be it for tonight. We want to know you guys' thoughts about the movie. What did you like? What didn't you like? What do you think we missed? Obviously, we haven't covered everything. We're not as versed in all the great lore of the Cosmic Universe and Marvel history, so we've missed some of that Definitely stuff. Not. Definitely not this one. Uh, but we want to know what you guys think about it. Leave it in the comments section below. And let us know if you like this video and any of our other videos that you've had a chance to view in the past. What else can they do uh, for, and to find us on social media? Um, we're currently on Facebook and Twitter. And be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And hashtag Trash Panda. Hashtag Trash Panda. So that's all we have for you guys tonight. But until next time, we'll see you real soon. Bye.